Good morning. Welcome to MagnaWave Office Hours for this Tuesday morning. My name is Pat Ziemer. I am the uh, CEO and founder of MagnaWave. We are a pulsed electromagnetic field therapy company. We provide equipment that delivers high energy uh, magnetic therapy to the body to help the body position itself to better heal itself. We've been doing this. Uh, I've been dealing with PEMF therapy since 2002. Uh, we've been dealing with the MagnaWave uh, high voltage, uh, low frequency devices since 2006, 2007. So we've got years and years of experience dealing with this type of equipment and uh, how it functions and what it does. And I'm here this morning and I do this on Tuesdays, twice, uh, 9 a.m. in the morning and 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Once in a while, we run into conflicts, and sometimes the afternoon uh, series uh, gets uh, covered over. But uh, we're here to answer your questions. So if you have any questions that you'd like to have uh, answered this morning, simply post your questions in the comment box right here on Facebook. They'll come up on my screen. I'll be able to see them. I'll answer your questions in as direct, uh, open manner as possible. Uh, we want to make sure that all of your questions are answered, whether that deals with training, uh, machines, uh, how the machines operate, the difference between digital and analog machines, any questions that you may have with regard to PEMF, please feel free to ask those questions and I'll be happy to answer them. If you have questions that you'd like to submit at a different time, uh, just feel free to call our office or send us an email and we'd be happy to uh, answer those, put those questions on the list and answer those questions uh, for you uh, at that point. So with that said, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to post them and I will uh, got something, I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Aaron. Thank you uh, for being with us. Um, and so until I get a question, it, it, I want to cover something and it, it appears, and it always comes up as a question. Um, it always amazes me when you deal with uh, competitors and there's a lot of competitors out there today that maybe weren't there 10 years ago when we, when we first started MagnaWave, but that's okay. Uh, you blaze a trail and a lot of people decide to ride the same trail, and that's, and that's fine. There's plenty of business and opportunity for everyone out there. But I'm always amazed when uh, people, instead of looking at their devices, the, the benefits their particular devices offer, or how their particular devices work, uh, choose to go the other route and throw people under the bus or uh, uh, make claims that are not real. Uh, I'm not talking about fake news or anything like that, but simply uh, present information that if it's verified, the information is not correct. And uh, so I, can, I thought perhaps I would uh, take a little time this morning and go over a few of those uh, questions that are posed uh, from time to time and give you some answers to those questions. With that said, if you have a question in particular that you would like to have answered, please uh, feel free to post it. And as I say, I will be happy uh, to answer it. So let me pull these uh, questions up here and I can uh, have a look at them and, and go from there. Um, one of the things that, that people quite often uh, talk about is, uh, for example, one of the comments that been, that's been made, what's the difference between MagnaWave and a competitor, uh, is a lot like the difference between an old flip phone and smartphones of today. Uh, MagnaWave is a 15-year-old technology that is more expensive, while the competitor systems are more affordable, have more advanced product options and accessories for horses and people. And it, it, it amazes me. All you got to do is go to our website and you can see that we offer high voltage, low frequency equipment uh, beginning in the uh, $6,000 range, $6,900 range, and up to the biggest machine, the Max machine, $21,000. Uh, so how someone could say that we do not have affordable equipment and that it's 15-year-old technology. The answer is the technology dates back 150 years. Uh, we're all doing uh, the same thing, and that is delivering delivering a pulsed electromagnetic signal uh, that penetrates the body in the manner that we do it and, uh, and, it, and it works. It helps the body position itself to be in a better, better healing, 
healing position. So the technology is not 15 years old, it's 150 years old. Now what changes in the technology is you have opportunities to change how it is delivered, meaning uh, is this device lighter than the old devices? Could this device be made smaller? Could and, and that's where the technology really comes in. The signal that's produced, the energy that's produced dates back to Tesla. And so you can have a lot of ways uh, to change things. And today, there's a lot of people looking at the digital aspects of the marketplace uh, where someone says, well, we have a digital machine that, that the other people don't have. And the fact of the matter is uh, some of the competitors' digital equipment sells for thirty-seven dollars to $40,000. When you deal with their lower priced units in the, in the $20,000 range, the $10,000, $12,000, $14,000 range, most of those units are, in fact, the analog uh, spark chamber type of devices. MagnaWave, on the other hand, has digital devices that de deliver a digital signal beginning in the $6,000 range and, again, running up into the more expensive, higher-powered machines up in the $20,000 range. So we have all areas of the spectrum covered if someone wants to talk digital. Uh, we now have uh, three, or let's see, four uh, let me get it all correct. Three digital devices. We have the semi device, uh, that is the smallest digital device we have. We now have the Wave Pro device, that is mid range between the semi and the Maya machine, uh, that has not only can you run two attachments at the same time, you can run two attachments at the same time and adjust them independently. So you can set the, the power how you want on each attachment independently, which I don't believe any, uh, anyone else has in the marketplace. They may, but I'm not sure that they do. And then we have the Maya device, which is our highest power digital device that is available. These devices, the digital devices, are all safety tested, uh, so they can be exported as human devices. Uh, safety testing is required if you want to go and, and further your positioning with the FDA and uh, seek out FDA approval. So you need to be safety tested. All of our devices are safety tested. Our digital, de digital devices are safety tested. Our analog devices have been approved in the past for Europe and CE uh, approvals and have been safety tested, and we're still building them the way they were safety tested. The way the CE approval works and the FDA approval works, if you change something on a device, you must reapply for the FDA approval or, or update your FDA approval or your CE approval in Europe. Europe and, and other countries. Where I'll, and, and so if you change a dial, you must do that. And so we've had CE approved devices that are analog into Europe and we change the timers, we change the, how the intensity is done, so we must resubmit those devices if we want to have CE approval in Europe or Health Canada uh, approval. Now, so what happens there, and quite often when you change something and you need to go back to the to the uh, to update your your regulatory, in our case where we want to approve the digital devices, uh, move those into the Health Canada and CE approval in Europe and the FDA uh, approval in the United States, we've chosen to safety test those devices at this point and use those for our CE approval and FDA approval because they're more regulated and more easy easier to control uh, devices. So I've given you a lot of information there, but this just goes to show that when someone says that we don't have the most latest technology, we are safety tested, we do carry product liability coverage for all of our all of our devices, and we strive to have them uh, uh, CE cleared in Europe and Canada, and so we can export them and use them for human purposes. So that's those are questions that have been posed. I'll do another one. Looks like I may have a question. Um, Oh, ta Aaron's making a comment about the about the other companies and and how they sometimes position themselves to to do that. And and you know, frankly, other companies have products that if you like them and if people like them, that's wonderful. Uh, they all are doing very similar types of things. I always tell people people ask me what sets MagnaWave apart, and I'm not trying to sell you on MagnaWave at this point. But we pride ourselves in being transparent. We pride ourselves in in trying to answer the question that you have and to be here to support. That's why we have a, a, a practitioner base of over 350 practitioners who are actively in the business to deliver this therapy uh, to their customers and their clients around the country, whether that's for small animals, humans, or the equine market. We have a very vast 
uh, area. And that brings me to another question that quite often the, the competition will put out is, oh, well, we have over 40 years of experience in the in the equine world, and, and we're the only ones that, that really know how to do this, uh, referring to me and that uh, I may not be a full-fledged horse person. Well, do I compete on the horse circuit today? No. Uh, have I been around horses my entire life when I was born? We had horses at our on our property. I've been around horses. I've worked at racetracks uh, in, in Kentucky uh, next to Evansville, Indiana since I was 15, 16 years old. I've been on the on the racetracks working uh, and and that whole type of thing. So I've been around horses my entire life. Am I as deep as someone else may be? Maybe not, but I've been around. I'm very familiar with horses. I've traveled around the world, Dubai and other countries, personally treating thousands of horses and people and, and, and small animals. So when you talk about how long, so it would be easy for me to say, well, we on our staff, we have over 85 years of equine experience on our direct staff in our offices. We have over 350 practitioners. You add their years up, and you're talking about hundreds of years of experience, and all that experience is shared daily in our private practitioner portal, and people share it on our Facebook page. And so, you know, why, why do we need to go there when we have to de- defend that? Let's talk about how how we can help people and make this equipment more beneficial to your animals, to yourself, and, and to your and to your clients. So uh, that's kind of how you know the, when you start shaking these things out, uh, and and I just it just makes no sense to me. But it comes up all the time, and I've I've actually I've kind of sat back and said, well, I'm not I'm not going to go there. But it's not a week goes by that all of a sudden a practitioner doesn't send me a, a which happened yesterday again. Uh, here's what these folks are saying, and it and actually it hurts all of us. I mean, it, it I don't want to say it hurts, but you, you're people who are choosing to get involved with somebody and and deal with a particular company. And again, that's great. But I I, I care dearly about our practitioners, the people that have been with us uh, for the last 10 or 12 years, and, and they work hard, and we work hard for them to be successful in in their business. So I feel that it, there's times that we must just sit back and say, look, these are things that are said that are that are not accurate. Um, we, we, want to, we want things to be presented as they may be. We, we're working very hard. We'd like to see an opportunity to where actually the, the industry self-regulates itself. So people do uh, present uh, information that everybody understands and everybody's on the same page. So you can sit down and talk about how, how this machine works and how this attachment works and, and so on and so forth. Let me see if we uh, – could you explain to me why we stay away from cancer with MagnaWave? Well, that's a very good question, and I'll answer it um, uh, straight away. And here's the situation. When these devices were first brought into the country, um, and there's a whole article about that, and people slam and say, well, the devices were banned, and they did this, and they couldn't, can't do that. And But the devices, when they were first brought into the country, they were not brought in uh, legally. Uh, they were brought well. They were brought in legally, but they were brought in with a different explanation. They were originally brought into the country as seed germinators. The the MagnaWave or the PEMF therapy is very effective at at seed germination, so you can get a better uh, seed development. Uh, sometimes better growth, uh, not necessarily more rapid growth, but you can get improved growth uh, of the plants that you're, that you're influencing with the PEMF signal. And the machines were brought in in that fashion. Well, when, when they came in, uh, the people that brought them in from Greece went to California and they began setting up clinics and they began talking about treating cancer and treating a lot of other maladies uh, with uh, these devices, and which they could do in Europe because they were approved in Europe. They were CE approved in Europe for human use but not the United States. And so they came in and they brought them in, and those are the comments that were being made. And frankly, the FDA got involved and says, you can't do that. You, you didn't bring these in as therapy devices. They're not approved for these uses in the United States. And so you have to, number one, uh, you, you can't bring them in 
currently, and uh, you have to stop making these claims. And as a result of all of that, uh, there were a few people who left the country uh, for a time. Uh, I, I believe they can be imported today. I don't think that was – it was not banned. The equipment that was brought in was never banned uh, by the FDA, and but it was – they did step in and say you're making claims that you can't make. And the FDA will do that, and we all try to operate very closely within the realm that we don't diagnose. We're not trying to heal anything. We're just trying to provide energy to the body. I call it energy supplementation that allows the body to take this energy and and acclimate to it and make the body uh, potentially better healthy, uh, better state to better heal itself. And, And that's what it's all about. So to kind of go on with your question, since that time for years, Uh, No one has talked about the use of this type of product uh, when it comes to various conditions. And if you're you're discussing cancer, number one, we don't talk, typically, we don't talk about conditions. I tell our practitioners all the time, we're not healing anything. We're not dealing with specific indications or conditions. But the questions continue to come and are continually asked. So around the world, in clinics outside of the United States, and in the veterinary space quite often in the United States, this type of therapy has been found to uh, reduce uh, tumors, to help the body clear up some of those types of uh, issues. Again, when you talk in the veterinary space and when you go outside of the United States to various clinics, Hope for Cancer in Tijuana and Cancun and in South America has a lot, uh, several of our devices, our type of devices that they use regularly uh, with their treatments of cancer and various things, but they can do that legally and and they can use them in those in that atmosphere. So in the United States, with, with any indication, uh, we don't talk about healing. We don't do that. And I hope, I hope I'm not being too redundant here, but we basically, uh, again, uh, allow the body to be in a position to better utilize the oxygen that's available to it, making the cells healthier, allowing the cells to better do their job and heal themselves and heal the body. And, and that's what we do. So we don't talk about those types of indications directly, and and we don't do anything. For example, a lot of people have used uh, these types of devices when you're dealing with uh, Parkinson's, and, and does it heal Parkinson's? No. Could someone feel better and, and relieve some of the systems of various indications that they have? People say that, and they tell us with anecdotal uh, experience. Now, to that end, uh, when you talk about what's being done to clear that up, uh, a lot of people ask all the time, what about research? What research has been done? Well, when you go outside of the United States, there's plenty of research that has been done on PEMF, um, extensive research, thousands of studies that have been done with all types of devices, high-powered devices, low-powered devices. Most of them uh, are facilitated with low-power devices, but there's a lot of research that's been done. In the United States, there are several devices that are FDA-approved. There's devices for uh, non-union fractures. There's a new device for cancer, for glioblastoma. That is a PEMF device that is FDA-approved. So we can now discuss that there is a device that they use. It's a cap that they put on, and it it, uh, produces magnetic signals that go into the brain, into the head, to hopefully reduce the tumors, uh, kill some of the stuff that's going on with the glioblastoma, and improve the life of those people that have it, and extend their life, and and help out. There are devices that are FDA approved for depression. It's called TMS, uh, Transmagnetic Stimulation. It's also used for autism and various indications. And all of those types of of, uh, devices that are FDA cleared have studies, and they do studies. Now, what they do do is quite often they, uh, uh, I I don't want to say they mask it, but they change their description. For example, if you look at TMS, they don't talk about it being PEMF. They talk about it being transmagnetic stimulation. Uh, There are other devices uh, that, that do the same type of thing, and they'll call it something a little different. So they can put that into their 
uh, clearance into their if you it's, if it's a patent that they have on their device or they want to they want to brand their device in a specific way they put their title of what they call their energy uh, they'll call it different things and so you'll have that whole aspect uh, being covered so yes there are several devices uh, on, in the human side in the United States there are PEMF devices are um, magnetic energy stimulation however you want want to call it that are FDA approved so there are studies there that support uh, the application of this. Our company, the, the factory that manufactures our company, and MagnaWave has participated directly on uh, three studies at this point uh, that were performed in Cuba, uh, studies that, that covered uh, back pain, knee pain, and now the most recent study deals with uh, prostate enlargement and, and uh, prostate disease or cancer of the prostate and, and how this therapy has helped. And these are studies that we have directly participated in in Cuba, our our, our home factory is participating in studies now that the safety approval has been uh, passed uh, with our devices. They have one more little tweak that they want to make, but then we have studies that will commence in the United States that will be used for CE clearance in Europe and for hopefully FDA approval in the United States. We're the only company uh, that I'm aware of in the United States, company and factory, that does actively pursue studies utilizing our own equipment, not totally relying on third-party studies. There's a lot of studies that, that people base their their equipment on, but they are studies that were done with totally different devices. But the you have to understand the energy is very similar. So in, so you have high-powered devices and low-powered devices. So sure, you can look in, in the FDA world, they consider that predicate. If you have a device that's similar to a vice, the device that is FDA approved, you can be approved as a predicate device. It's much easier to do. It's not quite as costly, but most people want to go in and have their device, their patents, their exact technology approved, and that's why people do what we're doing as they approach these uh, uh, regulatory boards. <clears throat> so, you know, again, I could probably go on with this for, for a long time, but it is that is stuff that I did want to to share and, and discuss because the questions continue uh, to come up and I and you know I, I it's easier to tell people what we do and to help them and to, and to be genuine from that perspective instead of uh, throwing anybody under the bus and that's not my plan here today is to throw anyone under the bus my plan is to simply clarify because you you read this or people see this information and and need to be uh, available to have their answers given sometimes they'll call sometimes they won't let's see uh, could you address epilepsy well, sure. Uh, epilepsy is an area that, that, you know, when you're talking about seizures and, and that whole thing, uh, there are many reports now uh, and some anecdotal situations that have shown and some studies that have shown the uh, application of this type of energy can be beneficial to potentially reduce uh, the uh, effects of seizures or reduce the seizures that are apparent with epilepsy and various types of indications. That's not to say, and we can't say, and I won't say that, that gee whiz, yeah, someone has epilepsy, go do this. No, you need to be in contact with your doctor and understand. There are various forms uh, when you talk about epilepsy or any type of indication or condition. There are many, many different forms. They, they, uh, forms of the uh, of the indication and each person is different so what may work for one person may not be beneficial for another person it needs to be addressed in a very controlled uh, understood manner and so uh, that's what I would certainly recommend if you if someone if you have someone or a, that you know that has epilepsy and you want to talk about can this type of energy could this type of energy be, be beneficial to them certainly uh, there are studies out there that are showing that there are results that are showing that but it's necessary that you deal with your doctor and you deal with it in a very uh, organized fashion um, and and we're seeing that and and you can you can go to uh, various uh, sites and and see the research if you go to the uh, MagnaWave site under the about tab there are some tabs Tabs for uh, research uh, that is available uh, to you, to, and you can search epilepsy and find the studies that have been done around the world showing the results 
uh, thereof. Uh, very good question, and and um, again, it, it's one of those kind of things that you need to research and understand what the opportunities or the potential could be. Uh, great questions. If you have, let me see if there's any other question. Um, okay, I got that one. Um, so, uh, any other questions? I'd be more than uh, happy to answer them. Been on now for about thirty minutes. Uh, I like to uh, answer any questions that you that you may have. Um, and let's see if I can find something here. Um, well, it, it, there's. I, it, I'd have to kind of look at it and organize it here a little bit, but which I can do. But I don't want to just stare at my screen. <laughs> And, and search down, but I did want to hit uh, a couple of points um, that that people have have a tendency to say to basically uh, paint someone in a in a position uh, or in a picture that they're not. Here's one. Here's a question that that often comes up that is presented uh, specifically was presented by some competitors where it talks about how the MagnaWave machine is used. That it, it has a 10 minute cycle and you run it for the 10 minutes and when its cycle is done you need to turn it off or you need to let the fan run for 10 minutes or the machine will not operate properly. That is not the case, never been the case uh, with with our equipment. For someone to make that type of, of comment is just somebody trying to make a comment to enhance uh, what they're doing. And I certainly recommend that if you have those questions, please pose them here or send us an email or send anybody uh, an email uh, talking about what those particular types of operations are. Our, our analog machines are very basic. They have a fan. Uh, they run for 10-minute cycles. At the end of the 10-minute cycle, if you ask me, I would say, yeah, it's important to allow the machine to breathe for a minute. 30 seconds to keep everything running cool and running the way it's supposed to, but it does not have to be turned off and wait 10 minutes between between sessions for that to operate, and that's never, ever been the case uh, with our type of equipment. Uh, another comment that people quite often make is they'll talk about where well, our machine is four times more powerful than anything on the market, but there are no specific numbers attached to that as to what they are. And and so it... it you, Four times more powerful than what? Uh, when you talk about the difference between low-powered machines and high-powered machines, any of the high-powered machines are probably, uh, pick a number, 50, 100 times more powerful than the low-powered machines. How is that decided? Well, the low-powered machines operate in a range of in between a 50 and, and a couple hundred, 250, 500 gauss, and the high-powered machines operate in a range of thousands of gauss, where you're talking about a 1,000 gauss, 2,000 gauss, many 5,000 gauss, many different ways that people talk about. And some people talk about 20,000 gauss, and, and so those numbers are, are out there. But there's, it's difficult to measure those numbers and to uh, put them into perspective. And that's some of the area that I would love to see uh, self-regulated within the industry, that we have testing apparatus so we could know, so you could know as the buying public what exactly are the numbers that these machines uh, will produce. I have equipment. We've had equipment uh, custom-made uh, that will do that, and we do measure our devices. Uh, the biggest challenge today is that the numbers are so far over the board. If somebody would come out and start publishing what those actual numbers are, people are going to be very confused. Uh, so let's see here. Um, I did that one. Let's see. In the future, wouldn't a remote... Would a remote be available for the Max or Maya? I often have to lose contact uh, with the horse to at the right intensity. Even viewed remote would be very helpful. And there have been many different attempts to use a remote uh, with the devices. In the past, the analog devices, it needed to be a mechanical thing that would physically turn the knob. Uh, type of situation because that's the only way to control the intensity and that was difficult to have a motorized uh, piece that could control the knob. As we get into the digital world where it's more easily to do, e more easily, more, uh, where it's easier to have a device that could be produced to move it up and down the scale, I think that, that a remote uh, would certainly be available and I would certainly think that, that someone and, and uh, perhaps our factories will be able to approach 
uh, that type of, of situation. Certainly when you get into micro switching and, and membrane switching, those types of uh, situations become much more probable. Uh, but today the remote uh, the remote issue with uh, most of the analog machines that are you know, on the market has been a difficult uh, situation to attain. Um, let's see, another question. Uh, please explain what attachments are available uh, for the analog and digital machines. Uh, false statements are also made uh, regarding this. Yeah, people talk about uh, various attachments that, that uh, they have multiple attachments and other we don't. And so let's kind of go over that. The attachments that are available for our devices, uh, we would say would start with the butterfly loop, which is a seven inch diameter butterfly, butterfly loop that can be opened up and placed on a shoulder or a knee or an ankle or a horse's foot or uh, wherever the situation may be. Then we have a large loop uh, that is often 12 to 15 inches in diameter that can be used certainly uh, on someone's back. It could be put over the shoulder. It could be put over the head to treat in this type of configuration, we also have a paddle that is available that the, the paddles are actually made in the original patented uh, Tesla coil configuration. That's where the, the signal, uh, the, the coil is wrapped like this, much like a watch spring or something to where the, 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 cop, the copper coil is actually touching itself, touching itself as it's wound out so it looks like a pancake when it's completed and it puts out what we call a pancake type of signal. It's like a like a spotlight, a bright, uh, a, a very intense signal. The interesting thing about the paddles is they will they will quite often double the amount of energy being delivered, the amount of gauss being delivered to the area of the body. But in many cases, you don't feel the intensity from the paddle that you feel from the butterfly or the large loop. So you'll get much more uh, feeling or flesh uh, movement with some of the others that you don't necessarily get with the paddle. Now when you use the paddle on a massive area of tissue like a horse, you certainly see the movement of the tissue. But the paddle will, just by the way it's made with the original Tesla configuration, is a, a much more energy delivering. But you don't feel it as much. Uh, you feel it Put, put, if you put your hands on the paddle like this, but you don't feel it as much, so people psychologically, they're thinking, I want the louder click, or I want to see more of a circulation of, of the tissue, whereas if you want more energy or more gauss delivered to the area, the paddle is an excellent way to do that. So we have the paddle, we have the butterfly, we have the large loop, we have the large wave wings uh, that are used that on a person, you could put the wings on and do the chest area and the whole back area at the same time. You could do the same thing with a, with a horse. You could put it over and do both hips at one time or both shoulders or you could lay it on top of the horse and do the whole top line of the horse so we have the large wave wings. We also have a more moderate sized uh, uh, 18 inch uh, size wave wing that, that particularly is more easy to handle with a human being uh, or a small animal if you wanted to lay a dog and, and drape, have put a coil under the dog and on top of the dog or the, you know that type of thing. And uh, or you could put it like a vest. You could put it on and have the wings over both shoulders and your back. So we have the large wave wings, the small wave wings, the paddle, uh, the butterfly loop, the the uh, large uh, the large loop. We have the mat. We have two different sizes of mats. Uh, and, you, and you know we're gonna we're getting ready to introduce a chair. Uh, in the past, the chair hasn't been something that we really looked at because we felt the mat would give you total flexibility. You could use a mat, put it on any chair you want, put it on your couch at home, uh, whatever the situation may be. You can have it covering your whole back. You could slide it down and sit on it to where it's doing your your abdomen and your lower body area and still your low back. Very effective uh, to use with the mat. But we offer bottom line. Uh, uh, Aaron, thank you for the question. We offer a total uh, complement of of uh, of attachments uh, that are available. Interesting thing that that we're able to do with the digital units. Uh, that we've had recently is it's been difficult to use what we call the long wire. And the long wire is something that's used more for people than it is for animals because it is just one long wire, uh, 15 feet long perhaps, and you can take it and wrap it around your arm, if you will, and plug it in both locations on the machine and really provide 
uh, a treatment in this type of in this type of manner with the digital machines with the single plug that's been difficult because it, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to but with the uh, with the wave pro machine we are now with the two signals uh, with the wave pro machine controllable you can put the long wire on that device we can use the long wire with the um, uh, Maya device and the all-terrain Maya certainly with the Max, the Pulse, uh, the Pulse Pro can use the long wire and all of these, all of these attachments. So a full complement or attachments are available uh, with all of our devices uh, to cover whatever. And now we have the the Oasis Lounger, which is a PEMF. Uh, mat, it's it's thick and it's a lounger, but it also offers sound vibration, what they call binaural beats, to where you produce various frequencies of music that are absorbed into the body through sound frequencies and the vibration <coughs> of the bed. Uh, works in concert with the vibration, so you're vibrating to the music, and then we have the PEMF underlying occurring at the same time. Uh, quite often, you don't feel a PEMF uh, at, while it's occurring during that, but it is there, and so it, it's a very in-depth uh, manner of treating and relaxing the body. So you receive a massage and a and the PEMF and music. Uh, comfort all at the same time. So we feel that we have got a total complement of uh, attachments and anything that we can do as we go down the road, we, we will certainly uh, add that. We're looking, uh, we've had one in the past that we have used. It's a very small uh, coil uh, about this thick uh, that is very zoned. I've had some acupuncturists that have liked to use that, uh, whereas when you use our, our paddle or our butterfly or any of our if you get near the acupuncture point, you will stimulate it. You don't have to know exactly where it's at. But there are some who want to take this small coil and put it right on the acupuncture point and treat in, in that type of situation. We have that and, and uh, that we make if, if someone needs one or wants one, uh, but it's not a regular part of the line at, at this point. Um, so a great question, uh, Aaron, on the, on the attachments. Uh, that are available, and um, and again, most people with their devices have the attachments that are necessary uh, to use. They adequately use their devices. Uh, folks, if you have any other questions, it's been on now for about 40 minutes. I'd be happy to uh, answer them for you. Again, if you have any questions that you'd like me to cover on a MagnaWave Minute, informational uh, questions that I do from time to time, just send me an email to magnawave one at gmail.com, call the office, uh, if you will. Here, let me put that up, the various ways that, that you can, uh, uh, let me find it here, here we go. Let me put that up. So if you have any particular questions, uh, I'm putting up now how you can reach us to uh, have those questions answered, and we'd be happy uh, to do that for you. Any other questions, folks, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, so we, again, get you the information uh, that you're that you're looking for. Uh, it's very important to us that we provide the information that is beneficial to you as consumers, so you know uh, where to go and, and what you're dealing with in terms of uh, particular types of equipment. And I, I'm often asked, well, you know, I don't want to say what sets somebody apart, but what you want to do uh, when you're doing your research, you want to know that you're doing you're, you're selecting someone that's been around for a while. That that is uh, been around longer than their warranty, and you want to make sure that that uh, they have a basis and a background of practitioners that have stayed with them, and and will continue to help answer the questions and and provide that type of information. Let's see, um, any other questions? Uh, no, they're just uh, thank you for your thank yous. I certainly appreciate that, and um, again, we like to to provide the uh, answers. Uh, that you're looking for uh, as a benefit to your business. So it looks like we've uh, got most of the questions. And uh, again, I thank you for joining me. I'll uh, uh, at the plan at this point, uh, without some meetings interrupting, is we'll be back this afternoon at two o'clock to answer additional questions that that people may have. So uh, we're glad to be here. And um, let me make sure I'm setting this up properly here. And uh, we thank you and have a great day. Bye bye.